Hello, uh, welcome to uh, another video talk on gliding and how to improve your performance uh, flying cross country. I've been flying since 1980, used to fly out the UK uh, and moved to Australia to get better conditions. I've been flying here since 89. I tend to fly online contests, long distance flights which entails leaving early in the morning before any cumulus clouds are marking the way and getting back just before sunset when often the clouds have completely died. The terrain that I fly on is large flatlands, very little vertical change over the area that I fly. Uh, you can fly over a thousand kilometers uh, over this wheat belt. And uh, the wheat belt has changed from the paddocks that you can see and then there's the rocky outcrops uh, with bush where the farmers haven't uh, taken the bush away because it's all rocky. Going back uh, when I very first started flying, I read a book by a pilot called Wallington who was a professional meteorologist. And he explained in detail how thermals um, were formed by heating the air on the ground. The ground warm, the, warmed up, it heated the air above it, and it would form the thermal. But the critical point we must remember, this is really important, that it's no good just having hot air. You can have an oxyacetylene lamp glowing uh, but it'll never support a glider. What you need is large volumes of hot air. And this is formed by the terrain that the air sits on. And this one paragraph in Wallington's, I can remember taking note of it, and it changed my flying technique completely and moved me up a big step. So let's explain that in detail. So when we uh, look at terrain, we'll see a road, for example, and the road will be heated up by the sun and it'll heat the air above it. And that bit of hot air sitting above that road will be very thin, maybe 100 mil thick, and you can see it as that mirage. Over crop, the hot air stored in the crop will be as high as the crop. And in bush, the volume of air that can be stored in the bush is as high as uh, the trees or the bush. Uh, we call it bush, you might call it forests, whatever, different terms in different parts of the world. And the large volume of air that's stored in the bush with the wind, as it exits the bush, it can't be sustained on the terrain that the air is going over. So if there's an area of bush on the windward side, it'll store up volumes of hot air. As it creeps out over the crop onto the lee side, the volumes of hot air can't be sustained and the thermal will lift away. Now, a number of years ago, I made a little video. It's not up to the Pixar standard, but it explains in fairly reasonable detail, let's hope, of how this all happens and what we as glider pilots can do about it. So let's look at uh, the area of flatland that I'll be flying over. And often we'll come across areas of bush. It might be um, towns. Uh, but in principle, something that's going to collect these volumes of hot air. So the sun's sitting there and it's heating the ground. Now, we've also got winds blowing in this scenario. It, uh, it'll explain things fairly well. So there's wind blowing across the paddocks. And... Through the bush, 
The wind will be slowed down due to the friction of the trees, the bush, the forest, whatever you choose to call it in um, your country. And as the air goes through the bush and is slowed down, it allows more heating to take place. So the volume of air that's heated increases as the wind blows more gently through the bush. Uh, obviously, if you've got only one line of trees, you're not going to get much volume. If you've got a very large area of trees, then um, you'll get a greater amount of heat built up in the bush. Now, when the hot air exits the bush, it can't be sustained over the flatland anymore. So it'll tend to rise up and form these bubbles of hot air which drift downwind. And I would tend to say that the bubbles a more a stream of hot air coming out of the bush. Now, underneath those bubbles of hot air or the stream of uh, thermal coming out of the bush, there'll be a lower pressure underneath, which will suck any residual hot air out of the paddock below. So the rising air that's been sucked out of the paddock is still good for us, we'll get lift out of it, but it doesn't produce the nice, strong, smooth thermal that is exiting the bush, but it'll help lead us into the thermal source. So what tends to happen is we'll get the air below the main thermal bubble is not as strong, but it's also narrower. So for glider pilots, downwind of the thermal source, the lift will be very narrow. Head upwind until you find the main bubble of rising air and only then you'll turn. And you'll tend to find that that street that leads you to the thermal will be turbulent because maybe it's only about 30 metres wide and therefore you've got this area of hot air about 30 meters wide going up and immediately adjacent you've got air going down you've got turbulence not too much but it's not that beautiful smooth thermal that's going up so go into wind follow the street until you get the smooth bit and away you go